we had a lot of nice time we found with body parts. Victor Sims, the Z historian. Now, in the early mornings of January 8, 2020, the residents of Chiwempala, a highly populated compound in the small town of Chingola on the Copper Belt, woke up to a rude shock. A number of well known businessmen, including some foreign nationals, have been attacked and their shops ransacked by their neighbors, accusing them of being behind a string of killings that have shaken the small town of Chingola to its very core. Now, the brutal and systematic manner in which the murders were conducted led many to believe that they were by no means random acts of violence, but rather part of some form of blood money ritual killing. Victims of these brutal murders were found lying in cold blood with different body parts, including the head, entrails, and genitalia removed. Now, of course, the pandemonium in Chuempala, apart from destroying the businesses and reputation of the suspects, did nothing more than raise more questions than answers. Who were responsible for these gruesome killings? And why were they mutilating and bodies of the victims? And were these acts of cold-blooded murder part of ritual killings? Or is there another explanation, perhaps less obvious, but even more diabolical? To answer these questions, we must first understand what constitutes a ritual killing. The rationale behind such acts and whether or not there could be other reasons why people would murder for human body parts. By definition, a ritual killing or ritual murder is the act of killing an animal or person in order to appease a deity. In ancient times, ritual killings were synonymous to human sacrifice, a practice conducted on a number of different occasions in many different cultures and societies. Despite the practice of human sacrifice varying from place to place, the rationale behind the practice was almost entirely the same as that behind other religious sacrifices in general. In most places, including parts of Africa, human sacrifice was typically intended to bring about good fortune or to pacify the gods. For example, in the context of the dedication of a completed building, such as a temple or a bridge. Fertility was another common theme in ancient religious practices, with sacrifices made to the god of agriculture for higher crop yields or the god of war for victory in battle. In such communities, human sacrifice was never done to generate personal wealth or private gain by individuals and killings were never done in a sporadic and senseless manner. But in the recent past, things have changed. A sacred custom once performed to benefit all has now turned into killing for personal gain. Ritual sacrifice has become the brutal harvesting of body parts for paying clients. Now, of course, we cannot fully comprehend the intricacies of ancient human sacrifice. But what is certain is that such practices ceased before the onset of historical records. However, though the ceremonies and their culture and religious connotations ceased, the killings continued. So clearly, not every murder with a mutilated corpse or with the body with parts missing is a ritual killing. But why is this important? Well, Labeling all such killings as such mystifies the offense, making it hard for the police to investigate and even harder to establish the motive behind the killing, which could potentially help prevent further loss of life. But are there people that believe in blood money rituals and would go as far as killing on account of their beliefs? And the answer is yes. Examples from other African countries prove that there are indeed many murders committed in the desperate search for blood money. Interesting enough, spiritualists themselves deny the connection between money rituals and blood money rituals, with some outrightly refuting that anyone can miraculously generate money by shedding human blood. Nevertheless, some witch doctors and their clients have been convinced that this is possible. Money ritual is quite different from blood money ritual. Let me, let me get that straight. Money ritual can be anything 
that we do just to enhance for possibly our business or our work to get more money. You know, I can be a trader now, then I can do some sort of prayers to enhance my sales. That is quite different from killing someone and waiting in my room, expecting a miraculous money to come. I don't want to hide the point. They, they used to tell young healers that if you slaughter a person for bad, for what, what, you'll get rich. The whole hand is dried and sold to, say, a client, but a, maybe a businessman who wants uh, success in his business. And that hand would be buried at his door, uh, and, uh, upside down. Uh, the, 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 the belief is that the hand is calling customers into the, into the shop. In your large day, who says human rituals for riches do not exist. If anybody actually said they did money rituals, uh, maybe the priest or the person that actually did that thing for them, give them a worry. So he can collect the part of the body to use for other purposes. You as a young guy, you go to a priest or someone and say, I want to do this, I give you a whole two legs and you come back like, yeah, but you just see it's no money, I didn't see it. It's going to use something on you. Who are those people who are being deceptive? It might be people looking for power, position, fame. It's been a cocktail of different positions and experiences on the existence of blood money rituals. But from what I've gathered so far, there is no hard scientific evidence to support claims that it exists. It is split between African science, spirituality, and what is real. If indeed there's no hard evidence to substantiate blood money rituals, what has led so many to believe that it exists? Well, some see the reason in part to be due to social media and some popular African movies. In recent weeks, uh, there have been reports of an increase in ritual killings for cash. What's more interesting, some of the ritual killers after being caught admitted their actions were one way or another inspired by Nollywood films and social media. Some time back, issues of killing of albinos because people believed that um, using albino bones, uh, they, they would be able to get rich on and so forth. It was just something that was created um, within the social media. It's something that indeed will influence people to do that. Another more rational but less talked about driver for the so-called ritual killings is the lucrative trade in human body parts. Over the years, the price of these organs sold on the black market has hit the roof with different organs being needed for different uses, including medical procedures. So the plot thickens as we have discovered there are many possible reasons for the so-called blood money rituals that have ravaged many parts of Africa. In the next episode, we will zoom in on Chingola town in Zambia to examine some of the historical and demographic factors of the town and see whether or not there are signs that would lead us to believe that indeed Chingola is a ritual town. I'm Victor Sims. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next episode of Dissidents, Deviants, Deviants.